number nine. Have you been following Charlotte the Pregnant Stingray on TikTok and Instagram? Back in huh? February, an aquarium in North Carolina announced Charlotte was pregnant despite being the only stingray in the tank. Oh, yeah. There were no male stingrays in there. An ultrasound uh. revealed she was carrying three or four pups. There are some male sharks in the aquarium, prompting speculation of a shark ray connection. Researchers say that is unlikely and nearly impossible. It's more likely Charlotte became pregnant through parthenogenesis. Oh, sure. That's when a body essentially clones itself. It's a scientific explanation for a virgin birth. Charlotte has not given birth yet, which is sparking all sorts of speculation. Hmm. A spokesperson for the aquarium says it's impossible to estimate a birth date because nobody knows her conception date, so we will all wait. Interesting. Hmm. All right, number eight, before we show you the post from a guy named Colin Rutherford, uh, we should tell you that uh, he is a 20-something, Ivy League-educated, social media-savvy founder of a storage company aimed at college kids. Point is, he probably knows what he was doing here. On Monday, along with a photo of himself and his girlfriend, he posted, do you know what a bottle night is? We lock our phones away, turn the TV off, each grab a bottle of wine and talk. That's it, we simply talk and enjoy each other's presence. We live together, but it's easy to miss out on quality time. Uh, now, just maybe Colin knew this tweet would take off because of course it did. And by Thursday, Colin had merch all ready to go. Uh. He posted new bottle night swag, uh, just dropped. Order now using the link in the comment below. He says, this tea was made in an effort to shine a spotlight on spending more quality time with your loved ones, bottle included or not. Boy, so everything you do, you, put, you gotta have merch ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> a full bottle each? Jeez. We, we got a problem. Yeah. 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 Right? Seemed like a lot. Lord. A lot. Uh, all right, number seven. Let's talk about the sad lives of Luna moths. Their lives are beautiful but fleeting. When Luna moths emerge from their cocoons, they're lacking some crucial things. They have no mouth and no digestive system. Oh. So they're unable to eat or drink water. Oh, jeez. And they have one purpose, to mate. So oh. they must do that within a seven-day span. And after that they die, which oh, is... Oh, terrible. Yeah, which is sad, but it's also a lesson to make the most out of those seven days. Mm. So, I wonder what their purpose in life is, you know? To, they they got to be me. doing... That's no, it. but I mean, did they do anything for the ecosystem? You know, is there is there a role they play? Right. And, you know, usually all those... Yeah. yeah. Are they carrying something from here to here? And I, That'll you know. be Monday. We'll call it a follow-up. Okay. <laughs> but Paul's Paul, in charge of the follow-up. He'll be bureau. back. He'll okay. be back oh, Monday. Good. Yeah, good. I'll let him know. All right. All right, number six, if you're going to take a nude cruise, there are some very specific rules you'll need to follow. A man and a frequent nude cruiser recently shared those rules on Reddit. He says passengers must be dressed when the boat is docked or while port authorities are on board. Clothing can only be removed once the captain makes an announcement, depending on certain cruise lines hosting the event. The self-serve outdoor buffets are clothing optional, but in some cases, people must be dressed in dining rooms. And finally, the towel rule. Always sit on a towel when bare-bottomed or wearing a G-string or thong. That's just standard nudist etiquette. Mm -hmm. and I think Pat's the only one who's had experience I in this department, so have you found that to be true? You have to put the towel down and there's all these etiquette rules? Uh, at the place that I went to, there was <laughs> not a ton of etiquette. <laughs> So they would have been conducting science experiments in the nude at this oh. place. Uh, number five, have you heard about Duke tenting? Uh, back on January 21st, Duke students began living in tents right outside the stadium to get special tickets to see their Blue Devils play basketball. The Duke-UNC game especially, it's considered one of the ultimate college sports rivalries. In order to take part in the tenting process, students must live in a tent with no electricity or generators allowed. They're only allowed to abandon their tent if temperatures drop below 32 degrees. Officials even do tent checks to make sure students are following the tent rules. If a student misses a tent check, they may lose their place in line and may even lose out on securing tickets. This year's process ended March 2nd, and the lucky ones who made it through tent season will be in the stands to watch tomorrow's game in person. That is dedication. So how long have they been there? When did that start? Yeah. Oh, did I miss I that part of your story, know. Larry? Yeah. All right.
Uh, number four, an airline is offering Apple ProVision headsets to passengers. The name of the airline is Beyond. It calls itself the world's first premium airline, and it will be passing the headsets out to passengers beginning in July. They'll only be available on flights to the Maldives, uh, the islands off the southern coast of India, and they'll be loaded up with movies, games, and other content. Now, this may sound exciting, but it might not be as great as it sounds. For best experience, users should have a customized fit with prescription lenses. All right, number three, here's a funny little uh, showbiz tidbit. The glasses that Jason Alexander wore as Costanza in the pilot episode of Seinfeld were the same pair of glasses that Denzel Washington wore in the title role of Spike Lee's biography of Malcolm X. Oh. The Oscar-winning costume designer Ruth Carter told of how yeah. Al Al Alexand Jason Alexander thought Costanza should be wearing glasses, and the only glasses she had on hand were the wire-rimmed ones that she had Denzel wear in Malcolm X. Wow. She had just finished that shoot when the Seinfeld Chronicles pilot was getting started. And Jason Alexander liked them so much, stayed with them. Huh. I never heard that. All right, number two, let's do another check-in with the Eagle's Nest in Big Bear Lake, California. We talked about this yesterday. It's two hours straight east of Los Angeles. This Good is boy. yesterday's video. There they are, the couple that lives there, Jackie and Shadow been sitting on their eggs. For a few years, the great nonprofit Friends of Big Bear Valley have used cameras to monitor them, and the Eagles have these new eggs. So we're gonna check in on them live now and switch to that. Oh, mm. just chilling. And the eggs are due to hatch pretty soon, I think we said yesterday, didn't we? Yeah, like the, they're supposed to go 40 days and yeah. we're like past, past 40. I, I think that's what uh, Wow. Our frequent viewer told us yesterday. Uh, mm. She said that they, they squabble on who gets to sit over the eggs sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. Jackie's a female. She's a bigger one. Huh. Baby eagles are called eaglets. For oh, you hatch. don't get to tell us. Gotcha. Come on, we're nature lovers. Well, we so, it was that, in the prompter, and I didn't that. want to miss it. <laughs> All right, well, number one from 1980 to 1982, ABC aired a live comedy show called Fridays that was meant to duplicate the success of SNL. One week, the host was Andy Kaufman, which meant that something unexpected would happen on live TV. Check it out. Now, in this next sketch, four friends, two married couples, are out to dinner on a Saturday night. Now, each one has secretly brought along a joint, thinking that for one reason or other, no one else in the group smokes dope. So when each person leaves the table, what he or she does is sneak into the restroom to get a little high. Gee, restaurants are amazing, aren't they? What's so amazing about it? Oh, I don't know, just all these strangers sitting around, eating, stuffing foods in their faces. <laughs> this is incredible to me. Excuse me, uh, I'll be right back. The beer, damn beer, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> Something wrong, Carl? <laughs> you okay, honey? I can't, um... Just say it. <laughs> I can't play you. I don't... I can't play stoned. <laughs> <laughs> I feel <Okay>. stupid. <laughs> You're very stupid. No, because where are you going? No. Oh, no, I think I I'm going to. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Fun. Come on. All right, all right. It's all in fun. Uh, what are you trying to do? This is all. Uh, it's all in fun. Come on. Where are we now? <laughs> cut it. Cut out. Cut out. So you cut it out. out. Why do you have to push cut this out. in my face? Come on. Why do you have to push this in my face? I'll this put it all in my face. This is my big scene in the show. Come That's why. Why? Okay. So, so what do you have to do? So what do you have to do? Come on. Come on. Look, I'm just trying to have fun. Bobby, Everybody's so excited about it. Everyone is so excited about it. What is happening? I don't understand. I... Bobby, 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 go to commercial, man. What? I don't know. Why do you have to be so excited? What? 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 
Sketch. Yeah. So is it a? It's got yeah, to be a bit. Of course. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know. Know. That. that was his specialty, though. You never knew. He did it everywhere. A lot of oh. the stuff he did was set up oh. in, in advance. That's, that was yeah. Michael Richards, oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Read, the, read the thing. Yeah. Oh my so, God. So planned by Kaufman. Apparently, two producers mm -hmm. and the three people in the sketch were the only ones who knew about the prank. The stagehands and crew did not know <laughs> it was so fake. That's why I'm that's and that something. is a nine at nine. Oh wow. It's the nine at nine.